So you need to know your, your, your babbit temp. The old boys used a pine stick and stick it in the molten babbit. If it bursts into flame, it's too hot. If it chars over quickly but doesn't flame, it's ready to go. Not too sophisticated. Um, a, a ladle of babbit that is at pouring temperature will glow red in a blacked out room. You can barely see it, but it'll be red. If you've got any light at all, you can't see it. Uh, for example, ASTM2, that's what I'm using, um, uh, that's a tin base. It melts at 460, but you pour it at 875. So just the fact that it got melted and you kind of spill, spill it around in there, it's not hot enough. Um, the bearing prep. You take a, let's say this, use your wild imagination that this is an old bearing and you melt the babbit out. Now, all of the uh, main caps, and T's and A's anyway, are steel except the rear main on a Model A. That's cast iron. You don't tin that one. You don't have to. Uh, but all the rest are tin. That means, for lack of a better word, it's soldered. It's got a soldered coat on it. So you melt the babbit out. Retin it if you have to. Uh, I use PAL weld. There's some other stuff that's uh, an acid -y kind of prep for the get the babbit to stick. You can uh, prime with 50-50 uh, solder, and uh, uh, there is a tinned uh, cap. This is ready to take uh, Babbitt. <clears throat> so you got, you got your Babbitt ready to roll. Get the Babbitt out of the block. I, I mentioned Powell, there's others. Then you heat the pouring fixture. In this case, this is the Model T Ford pouring fixture. I usually date this stuff. I don't see it on there now. Um, since the Model T rear main has the thrust, it's got a thrust shoulder there. And you always put a little more babbit in there than you need. And that's about eight inch thick. And then I've got a recessed board in there. So when I'm going to do the cap, it goes in here. It's adjustable. I can move this around because I use this for one, two, and three bearings. And uh, then this piece goes up against the steel. This one comes down on the top. And the cap, it may not sit in there right now. These things are older than some, some of you younger people. <laughs> Doesn't make any difference which end goes up. And then this would close up there. Well, there's a little babbit thing hanging on there. I'd have to get that off. Tighten that up and put this piece up here. <clears throat> I reference marks to get it centered. And then uh, that clip will hold it. And then you heat up the pouring fixture for two reasons. Those of you that do bullets and fish weights, you know what, what that, why, why do we do that? Yeah, you want to get the moisture off the pouring fixture because the room temperature, or worse yet, cold metal, will sweat to beat hell uh, when it gets uh, hot. That's why guns, guns sweat when you bring them in out of the cold from hunting and you put them in the corner of the room and moisture runs down. So you pour Babbitt into that thing when it's cold and you're going to be wearing some of it and it goes right up on the overhead in your hair and other places. Um, so you want to heat it up maybe around 300 degrees. I usually go by touch. Um, when I was doing bearings right and left, I could pick up the hottest damn stuff you could imagine, which didn't go over well with my wife because I'd be heating some plates up in the, in the oven for supper or it didn't cool off and I'd hand her a plate and she'd damn near drop it and I just didn't realize that I could really handle some hot stuff. Not so much now. But you get the pouring fixtures up about 350. Well, this job here, this is the Model A Ford commercial made. This, this isn't K.R. Wilson. I don't know who made this. There's no, they didn't have the courage to put their name on it. But uh, this would go down in a Model T cap, and uh, it's got a, uh, it's got a uh, oil distribution groove in it. And the one that's up in the, this is a cap. The one that goes in the block's got a little different shape. 
because that thing has to jog over and pick up the oil hole that comes down from the valve cover or valve valley. So the main cap sets in there, get her all sucked up tight, it's got it in the vise. You heat up the cap up around 400, 500 or hotter. Get this the pouring fixture up about 300. Take your ladle and you just pour it right down in there and you fill it right up to there. Sometimes a little babbit will trickle out, no problem. Have a spritzer bottle there, give it a couple of shots and it'll freeze over. And then before it gets real cold, if you're using one of these models, and I don't know where you ever get one, but you get a hold of this handle and you yank the hell out of this one, munch, and the babbit that went through those holes will shear off and that's what gives you this thing. And then you dump this back in the pot. See, that was, that was right down in there. So you pop it loose and then uh, give it a second or four to cure or harden up. And then uh, take it apart and go to the next one. <coughs> okay. Um, where am I? Okay. So, and of course, you've got to get the bearing body itself or the block, that part right at the bearing. You've got to get that hot enough to receive the, the babbit. If it's on the cold side, the babbit will go down in there and freeze over and you get short shots or gaps, doesn't fill, and then you get to do it over again. And a guy uh, that I was talking to about this, he says, uh, what I do is I take the Model A block or T block, I shouldn't do that, the guy means well. And he said, I put it in my wife's oven and I turn it up as high as it'll go and I leave it in there for X number of hours. And he said, it comes out of there about 400 degrees or better. And he said, I pour that babbit and it goes down in there beautifully. I said, well, how long does it take to cool off before you take the fixtures and stuff off? Oh, I, he said, that doesn't matter. I just leave it set there, maybe an hour and a half or so. And I said, well, what about segregation in the babbit? What's that? Well, segregation is a concern. There are different elements in the babbit. Some are heavier than others. So when it melts, the heavy ones start heading for the bottom. So you take a spoon and you stir that up just before you pour it. Well, once it's in that box, hotter than Dutch love at harvest time, and it takes the two hours to cool, all the heavy elements are going to the body. You don't want them, you want them dispersed. I don't know if he followed my reasoning or even appreciated it. Uh, but anyway, I threw it out there. Um, mm -hmm. Now, the other thing, when you pour, you want to pour with a good stream. The older guys know what I'm talking about. <coughs> you want a good stream. If you pour too fast, you can trap air bubbles. The babbit goes slopping down in and it roll up and you got a bubble in there a lot bigger than, than these things. That might even be the lot, latter third of the, of the whole damned operation and you get to do it over. Uh, if it's too slow, the stream can cool off going through air. You don't get enough force to fill and so it, it'll stop again. It piles up. Uh, if the pour is too cold, the babbit itself is too cold, it'll start down in there and just freeze over. Or if you do get enough of down in there, it may not be hot enough to transfer into the back or the, 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 the cap or the block and either bond or fill into the anchor holes. And, and that's important. Um, 